could you start by telling me why the organization was created in the first place? Speaking for myself and a lot of other internationally trained dentists, we were basically fed up with the waiting, fed up with kind of how we felt like we were being treated. And there are genuine issues that we face in regards to the equivalency process that we can get into further, but we felt like they weren't being addressed. And it's a terrible feeling having this skill set and not being able to use it. So it's quite frustrating to be an internationally trained dentist and waiting to get licensed. So we felt like there was a need to create an organization in order to address these issues. Once I got involved, I learned very quickly that over the last you know, five, six, seven years, there's actually been quite a number of people who have attempted to address these issues, whether it be by contacting the NDB directly or by reaching out to their political representatives. And they, they, they made strides. But the problem is that their efforts were very disconnected. So what became clear is that we needed an organization to bring everyone together. And that's what ITDAOC is. It's an association for internationally trained dentists. And we advocate for the needs of internationally trained dentists. And right now, our most pressing need is to fix the issues that we face with the equivalency process. Could you give me some sort of an idea about how many members you have? If you have an executive, are you the president or... So I am the president and founder of ITDAOC. Our executive board will be updated next year. But in terms of membership, initially membership was slow, but it's growing quite rapidly now, if I do say so. And it's based on internationally trained dentists across Canada at all stages of the process, ranging from people who've just had their uh, profiles verified to individuals who've completed the process that's membership and then through social media we also try and communicate with people who have not decided to be members yet we try to be all inclusive as we encourage people to become members what type of initiatives are you undertaking to advance your members interests so we're taking on a multi-faceted approach starting with advocacy, uh, reaching out to our political representatives on both the uh, federal and provincial level. And uh, I'm quite quite pleased so far because for the most part, uh, they've all been very supportive of our position. They are for the most part empathetic with our situation and uh, they're supportive of our solutions uh, to the problems. So they are helping out in the ways that they can on both the federal and provincial level. Kind of the the second area that we're focusing on is media outreach. Uh, We we think that it's very important for the general public to know about the importance of foreign credential recognition and how it impacts their lives. Because the, the truth is with dentistry, according to the Canadian Occupational Projection System, there's a projected shortage of 5,000 dentists by the year 2028. And that's going to impact the average Canadian citizen when that person needs to see a dentist, especially if that person lives in a rural area where where they already face shortages. And those shortages are going to be filled by internationally trained dentists. So this system, this issue affects them. And, you know, we don't, we don't expect the average person to necessarily understand or relate to the specifics of the process that we have to go through. But we do think, and they have, from our experience so far, empathize with our stories, the, the struggle that we have to go through, the, the stress, the anxiety, the, uh, the, the death, all of that. They, they can relate to that. And those are the stories that we're trying to get out. And We have our social media accounts, which are getting a decent following. And in terms of traditional media, we've made some connections and there will be some stories that are coming out in the near future. So we're kind of excited on that end. 
kind of the other area we're focusing on is just direct communication with the dental regulatory authorities. So far, I've had the opportunity to speak to the executive director from the NDEB. And I've also had the opportunity to speak to some representatives from a few of the provincial regulatory authorities. And, you know, the truth is this whole issue can be solved internally. There is no need for advocacy or media outreach. This whole, this whole problem that we face can be solved with, you know, a, the modification of a few sentences in the NDB bylaws. It's quite simple. And uh, it's just a question of their willingness to want to address the issue. And in my conversation with the executive director from the NDB, it's, it's very clear that, you know, they are good people with good intentions. They just have a very difficult job to do. And for in certain issues, when it comes to say opportunity and exam cancellations, they probably don't deserve a lot of the blame that they got. Uh, you know, COVID was a major factor. But when it comes to issues such as the perceived unfairness of the exams, the standard setting and validation of the exams, potential bias amongst examiners and subject matter, matter content experts that create the exams, we didn't come to an agreement. And uh, that's a major issue that needs to be addressed. So we hope that we can solve it internally so that there is no need for you know, advocacy or media outreach, things of that nature. You know, I've been around associations for an awful long time and I know they're jolly hard to sustain and, uh, and, and keep going. Have you got particular plans for the future? Um, I see from your website that mentorship and community is an important component of what you're up to. First and foremost, we're focusing on kind of growing the structure and the team of the organization. We're trying to onboard more people just so we can move quicker. Like we need more people to help out to actually do the work. As I mentioned before, just and the things that we're currently working on to continue working on those things because they have been effective. In terms of community and outreach, there is a need to bring internationally trained dentists together because there are issues that we face that are very difficult to talk about, but they're hugely important. And kind of there's, there's two areas that we're going to be releasing content on shortly. And those two areas are mental health awareness and financial planning, because those are the two areas that create the most stress for internationally trained dentists. When it comes to mental health, the process is very stressful. People complain of anxiety, de depression, family issues, uh, divorce. Like you, you hear it all when you listen to their stories. And the exams themselves are very stressful. So they need access to resources and coping strategies to help them deal with this stress. And then financial planning. The process gets very expensive very quickly. So we want to help them strategize and allocate their resources properly so that they can get through this process without accumulating an unnecessary amount of debt. And in terms of community, I've found speaking to people, just having someone to talk to, knowing that someone is in the exact same position as you feeling the same way as you, has been beneficial to a lot of people. So that's kind of why we're trying to create that sense of community so they don't feel like they're alone. Right. So Luca, just to wind down this conversation, would you have any message to your future colleagues, no doubt, the dentists of Canada at an individual and an organizational level? If I were to speak to the provincial regulatory authorities, I would say, you know, ultimately the accountability falls on them in this process, you know, partially because nine out of the 12 board members on the NDB are from the provincial regulatory authorities and partly because fair access legislation states that they're accountable for third party providers like the NDB. So we want to you know, work with them as well to address 
this issue. And uh, in my conversations with them so far, they want to address this issue as well, because the issues at the NDB don't reflect well on the provincial regulatory authorities. You know, to the NDB, you know, we've kind of fostered or trying to foster a positive relationship so far, and we're trying to continue to do that. I think they think that they are perceived as the enemy by internationally trained dentists, and they're not. They're, they're good people who have a difficult job. We just want to address these issues because they impact our lives significantly. So we hope that we can continue to work together to address those issues. You know, the, the, CD, the Commission on Dental Accreditation of Canada also has an impact on us. They do the mutual recognition agreements with countries across the world. You know, it's unclear why they haven't pursued uh, you know, a broader range of countries that would solve a lot of the problems that we face. And then, you know, I would like to speak to them as well because two out of the 12 board positions at the NDB are from the CDAC. So we'd like to learn of their position on internationally trained dentists and the equivalency process because, you know, based on where they stand, it's unclear whether or not their interests align with ours because they're quite literally designed to protect the system of accreditation in Canada. And then, you know, if you want to talk about the schools, the schools kind of put us in a bad, the dental schools put us in a bad position because according to the NDB, they're the reason why we weren't allowed to use their facilities for the equivalency exams uh, over the past year and a half while they continue to host the certification exams. So you know, I, I would love to speak to them and know why that was the case, because you know, that was a major setback for us. You know, if, I wanted, if I had an opportunity to speak to the associations, I would tell them the percentage of internationally trained dentists is going up in Canada and it will continue to go up. But you know, the associations really haven't taken a position on this issue. So the concern from our end is, you know, there's, there's this concern that there's a percentage of licensed dentists who are against the increasing numbers of internationally trained dentists. So the longer they stay silent, the more concerning it is for us that that is the position of the association. So we would like the associations to help us out with this issue of credential recognition for internationally trained dentists so that, because we will be members of these associations one day. So we think this is a position that they should take. And then for, you know, licensed dentists in Canada, we, we don't want there for there to be a divide between internationally trained dentists and Canadian trained or accredited dentists. It's, it's, it's one group we we just want to be seen as equal. We just want to work. We're not here to steal your patients or or compete. We are just qualified dentists who want to work. We want this to be ultimately a positive relationship. So please don't see us as the enemy. Lucas Salvador, thank you so much for laying out very clearly uh, the goals of your organization and uh, and what you'd say to representatives of organizations and individuals across the country. I look forward to catching up with you again and see how you're getting along. Mm -hmm.